A virtual machine or VM is an emulation of a physical computer. Basically, you're running a computer within a computer. Here are some of the advantages to this technique. You'll notice in this example, we only have one physical host, the desktop computer. This means potentially we're using less electricity, outputting less heat, which that's important in data center environments, and thus being more environmentally friendly. We also didn't have to pay for computer hardware or other accessories like monitors, keyboards, mice for each of the VMs. We simply use the host attached devices. We can also clone these virtual machines very quickly and make backups if necessary. And since these machines are virtual, we can send them electronically across the world without having to pay to ship 60 pound servers. So virtual technology is very commonly used and it's something that you're going to have to be familiar with. You need to understand how virtual machines work. So continue on to the next lectures and you'll grasp an understanding of how to build the VMs and how to operate them. So I'll see you in the next lectures. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and download a software that's going to manage our virtual machines. So the software is called VirtualBox. So we're going to go to www.virtualbox.org. Okay, so it's pre-filled for me, so I'm going to hit enter. All right, we're going to click on this download section over here. And we're going to download VirtualBox 5.0.10 for Windows hosts. Now this version, it could be different for you. Uh, if it sets a different version, it's not a big deal. So we'll just click the x86 slash AMD. And we'll hit save. Okay, it'll view this download. All right, and we will just wait for this to finish downloading. Okay, so that has gone ahead and downloaded, so I'm going to click Run. Alright, bring this over here, so we're going to click Next. And we're just going to go ahead and leave all these options checked, and we'll select Next again. Uh, I'm not going to create one on the Quiz Launch Bar, you can leave that there if you want. And we're going to want to register file associations, and we're going to want to create a desktop shortcut. Maybe that's fine, we'll say Yes, Install. Okay, so we got that installing now. It's asking me, would you like to install device drivers or device software? Now we're gonna want to go ahead and say yes, install. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and say start Oracle VM VirtualBox after installation. So leave that check and click finish. All right, and there we go. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this web browser, and I'm gonna take my shortcut and I'm going to stick it over here on the desktop. So now that we got this installed, we're ready to go ahead and download Server 2012. So I'll see you in the next lecture. In this lecture, we're going to learn how to manage and create virtual machines using Oracle VM VirtualBox. So the first thing we need to do is start up VirtualBox. And once that comes up, we can see this was where all of our VMs will be listed. Now you can see I have a group here, and within that group I have two VMs. One's a domain controller and one's just a Windows 10 workstation. Now you're not going to have any of that because I created all that in another course, another Udemy course that I teach. So what to create a new VM, what we're going to do is click the new button in the top left corner. And this is where we'll name the virtual machine. Now this is just the name of the virtual machine relating to VirtualBox. This isn't actually the computer name of the virtual machine. So I'm just going to name this Test Virtual Machine. Okay. And for whatever reason, it thinks it's going to be Linux when I type in test virtual. I don't know what's up with that, but I'm going to change it over to Windows. And uh, I'm going to do server 2012 64 bit. Now, if you don't have a 64 bit computer, you can do you know, Windows uh, 732 bit or Windows 832 bit or just pick one of these 32 bit operating systems like Windows 10. Uh, you can actually download Windows 10 for free. Uh, so if you need to, you can do something like that. Okay, and then there's also, as a side note, there's also Ubuntu, which you can download for free, and we'll get more into that in, uh, further down the course. So I'm going to click Next, and this is where we specify the amount of random access memory, or RAM, and it's specified in megabytes, so it's not 2,000 gigabytes, uh, so 2048 is 2 gigs, that's good enough for what we need. So I'm just going to click Next. You can create the virtual hard disk now, which is what we're going to do, or you can use an existing hard disk file of and you can see here they have the other two virtual machines listed. I could use those hard disk files. Uh, not really a good idea for what I need right now. You can also create the virtual machine without a hard disk file. 
uh, which is also not really a good idea for what we're trying to do at this point in time, which is create a virtual machine and get it running. So we'll create the virtual hard disk now, click create. And this is where we select the format. Now we're going to choose VDI. And you can choose these other formats that are compatible with different software. The VMDK you can use with VMware and uh, so forth. But the VDI is fine for what we're going to do. Now to choose either dynamically allocated or fixed size, it's a pretty simple choice and you pretty much want to do dynamically allocated. The only time you want to choose fixed size is when you're really concerned about never running out of hard drive space and filling up your VMs to the max. So if you're creating, if you want to create five virtual machines and you know they're going to be create, filled up to the max, then you might want to choose a fixed size hard disk. But the difference is if you choose dynamically allocated and you want to have a 50 gigabyte hard drive, Dynamically allocated will create a hard disk file that's as small as it can be, which I believe is 2 megabytes, and it's going to fill up to 50 gigabytes as you use the operating system, as you install software, etc. If you choose a fixed size, then the hard drive is just going to be 50 gigabytes no matter how much is actually on the VM. So dynamically allocated makes sense for what we're trying to do. Okay, click next. Now this is where we actually set the size of the hard drive since we chose dynamically allocated. This is the maximum size that the hard disk file can take up on our host machine and the maximum size that the hard disk can appear on the VM. So when someone goes in onto this VM and they go to my computer, they're going to see your hard disk size is 25 gigabytes. So we'll click create. That's good enough for us. And here we can see that it dropped it into this other group here, which I don't want. So I'm just going to drag it outside the group. I'm going to minimize this group. And I'm going to right click on this VM and I'm going to create a new group and I'm just going to call it actually I have to right click again and select rename group and I'm just going to call this test group there we go so now we have we're all we're all organized we have w to me domain and we have test group so I'm not going to be confused I'm not going to be clicking on the wrong VM or doing anything silly like that I can right click on the VM and I have settings I can clean the VM I can remove the VM which if I click that it'll ask me do I want to delete all files or remove only. Difference is this will actually clear it off of the hard disk. This and remove only will only clear it from the inventory. All right, so it'll just take it so we can't see it here anymore. I'm just gonna click cancel because I wanna keep this. And uh, I'm gonna right click. Uh, actually, one more thing, if I click on show and explore, it'll pop it up here. And here you can see the test virtual machine VDI file. This is the virtual disk image and it's two megabytes like I thought it was, I was right, two megabytes. So if we set this to fixed size, then this hard disk file would be 25 gigabytes, even though we don't have any files stored in the hard drive yet, okay? So these are our VirtualBox machine files. Just leave all those and we'll close out of this. Okay, so I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna select settings because what we need to do at this point is mount the Windows Server 2012 ISO or whatever operating system you wanna install You'll get the CD or the disk image in an ISO format. Usually it's how you get it. I'm going to select that ISO file and I'm going to mount it so I can launch and boot to that disk. Now under general, we have different settings uh, that w I don't think we'll, I don't think we'll care to change any of these. I don't, I'm not worried about encryption. Uh, you, this, you might want to change the memory. If uh, you find it's too slow, you can change this boot order. That's very, very handy. Uh, VirtualBox does not allow you to boot to an external hard drive. So if you bring in a USB drive, you can't plug it into your computer and boot to it. It does not allow it. But you can raise the uh, processors, different things like that. Um, you know, diff there's different settings in here that you're probably not going to ever mess with. Now, what we need to do is click on this little disk icon where it says empty, and we'll select this drop down. And I've already, these are files that I've recently used, so you're not going to have any of these listed more than likely. Now, what you need to do is click Choose Virtual Optical Disk File, and you'll browse to wherever you downloaded your ISO file. So you can choose DMG uh, or ISO or CDR file. Now, I'm just going to cancel because I already have it listed here. And for whatever reason, Microsoft likes to make these really complicated names. This is basically Windows Server 2012. So I'm just going to click on WinBlue Refresh, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Now. One more thing that I might want to point out to you is under network, this is attached to a NATed adapter. And 
the only thing that you really need to know is that if you want to change, if you want your virtual machines to communicate to each other, which we will at a later point, you'll want to change this to internal network. But for our purposes right now, we want to leave this at NAT. Okay? So we'll click OK. All right, so the virtual machine has been configured. We can see a quick overview at a glance of the settings. There's our Windows 10, or I'm sorry, Windows Server 2012 ISO is mounted. We see it has two gigs of RAM. You can just browse down and look at these different settings. And we are done. That is how you create and manage a virtual machine. So I will see you in the next lecture.